Today we're going to try and build a very simple holographic display. Let me show you exactly what I mean. This PCB looks freaking fantastic, but you see this edge over here? Yeah, that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> I think something got messed up when generating the Gerber files. But the good thing is that it only affected this one trace on the top layer and the outline layer. So I think you know where I'm going with this. Now that our PCB has the outline that was originally intended, we can commence with the soldering. So let's see if it flaps. That's quite a flap we got there. Now all we have to do is configure the LED driver to turn on the LEDs. One eternity later. Finally the LEDs are lighting up. That is all the data being shifted by the microcontroller to the LED driver. And now if we put it on the magnet we should see some holographic action. Wow, that's way larger than I expected it to be. At this stage, it's still at the same level of the first prototype, it just has some more LEDs. But to make it display some more complex graphics, we need to make it independent from the height. And to do that, I made this little 3D printed base. So my holographic display is just going to be made from the magnet, the base, the PCB, and some screws. Moment of truth. That's so freaking cool. Cue the holographic sequence. Let me show you how this thing works. I am toggling the coil's magnetic polarity every 20 milliseconds, which I believe is its natural oscillating frequency. Now the LED driver takes around 1.2 milliseconds to update the value of each LED. So on each flap the driver can change the state of an LED 16 times, which is what I'm showing here. But visually this doesn't look good because the on time of each row is very small when compared to the size of the column. So what I did is add a little delay after setting the LEDs and instead of 16 rows I am using 8. The blinking you're seeing is because of my video camera's aliasing effect. In real life it's much prettier and totally smooth. Now why is this special when compared to other POV displays? First of all it has zero mechanical complexities. Second thing is that it is more silent. And the third is that it also can be portable and powered from one cell LiPo battery. It also has a couple of issues. The one that I consider the most critical is that some of the LEDs got damaged. I think it's because of the stress they are experiencing during flexing. Another issue is that to get flex rigid PCBs at a prototype level, they are very expensive at low volumes. This is obviously understandable because of the process you need to manufacture it. But I think I also have a cheaper solution for this, which I will discuss in one of my next videos. And no, it doesn't include adding a connector. <laughs> I would appreciate if you share your thoughts on the third version in the comments below, like should I make it smaller, should I make it larger, what kind of applications should I use it for. In the meantime, you can also check out how I designed this flex rigid PCB on Altium. I made a whole video about this a few months ago. And for those of you who support me on Patreon, I will also be giving away one of these PCBs. 
And by the way, all the files for this project are open source and released online. To end this video, I would like to thank PCBWay, which sponsored these flex rigid PCBs. If it wasn't for them, this project would not be possible, so make sure you check out their services. That's it, I hope you like this project, I think it's one of the best things I ever made, so I hope you do as well, and see you in the next video, bye!